Let's go! LSU versus Florida preview. We have a lot to get to and not a lot of time. All the way from Chi-Town, baby. What is this thing called? I've seen it in so many different movies, but I finally got to see it in the flesh. Millennium Park is back there where they uh, do Lollapalooza, but we have a lot to get to and not a lot of time. LSU, Florida, obviously the big story here are the two quarterbacks. Two of the quarterbacks that are obviously super uber talented as runners, but are both very flawed passers. Anthony Richardson versus Jaden Daniels. Obviously, there is a lot to like about both of these quarterbacks, but they struggle in two completely different ways, right? Jaden Daniels tends to not actually pull the trigger and throw the football, and that leads to not a lot of turnovers, but at the same time, it lends itself to a bunch of missed throws. And Anthony Richardson is actually the opposite. He throws a lot of interceptions. He's had seven on the season, which is obviously a lot. He's had two games, two, not one, but two games where he has had a QBR under 20, which is obviously really, really, really bad. A replacement level QBR is 50. So obviously everyone's gonna be talking about that matchup and then the second part of that is the overarching matchup between these two head coaches, Billy Napier and Brian Kelly. Now, the biggest difference be, uh, for me between these two offensive struggles is Florida actually has been able to generate explosive plays. And this stat is going to blow your mind. But first, if you are a subscriber, Look at that. That is crazy close. Every time we do it, when we were in England uh, for our live stream, babe, you remember that? There was the, uh, um, the queen, the queen flew in. It's crazy. RIP. Uh, but truth be told, when you look at LSU versus Florida, Florida's offense is very explosive. So in all of college football, there has not been a more explosive offense than Florida outside of one. They are number two in explosive play rate. I think Minnesota is the only offense that has generated more explosive plays than Florida. They have a 20%, it's like 20.68% explosive play rate. That is better than Alabama, that is better than USC, that's better than Tennessee. And what explosive play rate means is runs of 12 yards or more and passes of 15 yards or more. So, LSU has been the exact opposite. And if, once again, if you listen to the free PHL podcast, you already know this from the preview, Florida is actually fifth if you power five adjust the numbers in yards per play, which is obviously really, really, really good. And the only teams in the SEC that are better, Ole Miss, Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia. So for me, while Florida's offense only put up 24 points versus Missouri last weekend, they did, however, generate 7.1 yards per rush. They got the running game back going. They just need to limit their mistakes. Where the LSU offense, on the other hand, is struggling right now. Whether it be scheme, whether it be protection with the offensive line injuries, that's gonna be absolutely huge. So, you look at the other side of the football for LSU, obviously, you know, getting the offense going. I do feel Florida's defense can give up the run, right? I think John Emery, who had a uh, some really nice runs versus Tennessee, broke a lot of tackles, albeit not for that many yards, uh, because we were very predictable with our run scheme. I do think John Emery uh, can have a potentially nice game. Now, obviously, LSU's defense, while they have been very good this year, the explosive plays have been an Achilles heel over the last two weeks, okay? So, you look at last week, the, uh, obviously Tennessee hit LSU for a ton of explosive plays. The defense, of course, was put in really, really, really bad spots. But at the same time, uh, you know, they didn't really play Harold Perkins all that much. And he will be obviously a big part of LSU's defensive scheme. Now, the second thing is, and the more concerning thing, is Auburn also had quite a few explosive plays versus the LSU defense. So at some point, and this isn't as much about the LSU defense as it is about um, 
just offensive philosophy, just in general. College football is an offensive game, right? Your defense is eventually going to get hit with chunk plays, and that is what has happened these past couple of weeks. And Florida's offense, I believe, will hit a few versus LSU as well. So it is on the LSU offense and the LSU special teams. Remember, in the history of LSU versus Florida, special teams has played such a massive role in this game. So, you know, for me, I, I have to give Florida the slight edge. But this is my favorite thing about this matchup. Florida has now been favored in three consecutive matchups. And you've seen what happened in the last two. The last two were just like where we are right now, where <laughs> Florida had far more positive momentum, obviously in 2020 when they were 23 point favorites in the Swamp and last year when they were 11 point favorites in Tiger Stadium, LSU was coming off that really, really bad Kentucky performance. And a few years ago, Max Johnson was starting his very first game after the Alabama beatdown that they took in Tiger Stadium. So it's kind of a similar spot here for LSU. And that's the funkiness of the LSU Florida game. Also, and I really do believe this to be true, LSU and Florida are uh, two teams that truly hate each other. I asked this question on Twitter. Make sure you follow me at Power Hour LSU and at Carter the Power. Um, is Florida the most visceral? team on LSU schedule. And I really do believe they are. It's authentically visceral is what I like to call it. Um, and I say that mainly because of, oh look, Nebraska fan. Who y'all gonna hire? Who y'all wanna go with? Oh, Matt Rule? Yeah, I gotta finish up the video. All right, let's go. Which way are we going? Let's go this way. But anyway, um, it's going to do a final score prediction here. LSU, uh, I do I do think Florida wins. I don't want it to be the case. We have predicted all the games uh, correctly uh, for uh, – we, we, we have predicted the last few SEC games correctly against the numbers. So um, I am going to go Florida in this one final score, 24 to 20. Comment down below. Uh, wish Haley a happy birthday. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. It is! It is! It is! Huh? 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 Once again, special shout out to all the new patrons. One five. Oh, yeah, we always do the one little extra nugget at the end of the video. One extra nugget here, right? About Florida in this spot. I do think LSU has one major advantage. I and I wish they would do this. I do think Jare Jenkins has been a Florida killer. Jaquay and Roy these last couple of years, his best games have come against Florida as well, as have BJ Ojolari's best games. So because of that, man, I kinda wanna pick LSU now. I do. I do. Uh, mm, am I changing my prediction here at the end? Let's see. Now I'm going to stick with it. But once again, be on the lookout for those three players. Those three players have had three of their best games. Dre Jenkins catching the first touchdown. The last time I we went to the Swamp, Jaquelle and Roy, the games he had versus Florida have been in freaking sing. So I expect another good performance from them. But anyway, now one little extra nugget for you. Three extra players. I would like to see a wide receiver grouping of Jare, BTJ, and Malik with Jack at the hybrid tight end. But we'll see. It is. Power, power, LSU. Boom! Mm. Going to Harry Styles tonight. We've been doing all this. Oh, yeah, I can't get demonetized because they would think it's actually Styles. Harry Styles. Oh, oh! Harry Styles. Treat people with kindness.
see. What are we having tonight? Sush? Probably. Tonight we're that doing place is right by the hotel. Is it really? Uh-huh. Tonight we're doing sushi. Let's go.